There is therefore now no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Do you know what this means? Today, I want to address condemnation. And I want to tackle this scripture, Romans 8 verse 1, to get to the gist of what exactly this scripture was intended to mean. Comfort and King, your majesty. Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Shalana Janelle, if you're a first timer. Today we're going to address the spirit of condemnation. And we're going to address starting from Romans chapter 8 verse 1. And I'm going to read it and it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Do you know what it means to not have condemnation? This scripture right here says that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And so I want to specifically speak to those people who are experiencing condemnation. Maybe they have um, been in a lifestyle of sin and they've come to Jesus Christ and they've asked Jesus Christ for forgiveness of their sins. And you are feeling guilt, you're feeling hurt, you're feeling shame. This scripture right here says that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now what this means is this means that Jesus Christ, the one who is going to judge the quick and the dead on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, he is going to judge people based off of whether you know him and whether you don't know him and by your deeds as well, okay? And so this Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, has the very right to cast and condemn each and every person into hell because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Romans 8 verse 1 tells us that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so what this is saying, I love how the verse starts off by saying, there is therefore now. It says now because prior to this point, prior to Jesus coming and dying for our sins and rising again, there was condemnation for people. There was no savior who had yet come to be the savior of the world, to give Give remission for all sins okay should they accept Jesus Christ and now Jesus Christ is in the picture and we have a way to have remission for our sins if we accept Jesus Christ and so it says there is therefore now because we're walking in this this situation from now that Jesus Christ is in the picture and it says now no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit okay and so it is saying that the very God who has the right to condemn will not condemn those who are in Christ Jesus and who are walking in the spirit and not in the flesh on judgment day this is very big because you have to understand this this goes past your feelings it goes past your guilt it goes past your shame God is saying that if you have turned away from your sins and repented you've asked for forgiveness you've repented you've turned away from your sins you look at those sins as disgusting and just like God looks at them and you are walking in Christ Jesus living in Christ Jesus and you're walking after the spirit and not after the flesh then there is no condemnation that will be resting upon your shoulders it is not about what you feel it is not about uh, anything you feel many people uh, the enemy tries to put the spirit of condemnation upon them whereby they begin to feel guilt shame hurt and then they feel that they're unworthy for God okay and so that is the trick of the enemy to make people feel like, okay, well, if I feel guilty, if I feel unworthy, I'm just going to not serve God anyways, even though they've already been forgiven and God has given them a new slate to be able to begin to walk in holiness. But the enemy wants to put the weight of feeling condemnation upon their shoulders so that they won't even give walking in Christ Jesus and walking in the spirit a chance because they think they've been completely written off. But this right here is saying that Jesus Christ has come, the one who has the right and the ability to condemn has come now and he has given us the ability to not bear condemnation but there's a prerequisite you must be in Christ Jesus and you must not be walking and living in the flesh but you must be living and walking in the spirit that's the prerequisite it is not oh you're you're saved just because Jesus died on the cross no that is a trick of the enemy to believe that D your salvation is sealed when you ask for forgiveness of your sins, you are forgiven for your sins, you repent, turn away from it, and you walk in Christ Jesus, and you walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. 
Amen. You see, the enemy wants people to be so far and deep into guilt and shame that they believe that God hates them and that there is not an opportunity for them to be saved. And so that they'll just stay in their mess and stay in condemnation and never walk towards God. But that is far from the truth. If you have asked for forgiveness of your sins, turn away from it. Repent. Walk in the ways of God. And there is no condemnation resting upon your shoulders. See, I like to look at it at like this. All of us are going to have to stand before the judgment seat. At the judgment seat, um, people are either going to receive a, let's say, a package of full of condemnation or a package full of forgiveness. In this case, it is your choice based off of you accepting Jesus Christ, you turning from your sins, you living a life in Christ Jesus and a life walking and living in the spirit and not after the flesh and the ways of this world. And so you get to choose. This is the one situation where you get to choose which package someone gives you, okay? And you get to choose whether you are going to receive a package of eternal condemnation or a package or of eternal forgiveness of your sins. Okay, and so that choice is up to you contrary to popular belief where people think that you don't have a choice No, God has given you the choice He has given you free will to choose whether you want to serve him Whether you want to walk in his ways walk in his will and live the life that he has called and predestined you to live He wants you to live in holiness. He wants you to walk in holiness But the enemy is trying to trick people with the spirit of condemnation so that they fall away But if you have been forgiven of your sins and you are walking in the ways of the Lord and you know you're walking in the ways of the Lord every single spirit of condemnation is not your portion it is not your portion because you have been forgiven and because you are walking in Christ Jesus and in the spirit and not after the flesh so if the enemy tries to remind you of things in your head and he tries to remind you of things that have been forgiven from your past you say no I've been forgiven for this and you quote Romans 8 and 1 and say there is therefore now no condemnation to me because I'm in Christ Jesus and I walk not after the flesh, but I walk in the spirit. And make sure you put emphasis on that. There is therefore now because it is it is for the present time as well. It was not, oh, just, just because and just whenever. You are forgiven and you walk in that forgiveness. Don't turn back into that sin. It is possible to live a lifestyle of holiness. I am a living witness. God changed my life tremendously and he can change yours too. But if you have, so if you're struggling with walking in holiness, then just pray to the Lord and ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit because you can only walk in holiness with the Holy Spirit. But if you know you've been walking in the ways of God, all you have to do is refute that spirit of condemnation and those thoughts of condemnation that the enemy tries to put in your head. Because if you are truly in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation. That means the very God who has the right to condemn you will not condemn you on judgment day because you are in Christ Jesus and walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. And so we have to understand God's grace and mercy in this matter when we read Romans 8 verse 1. It is showing us that everyone was condemned at one point. There was no a uh, sure way to be saved at one point but by the grace of God by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ we have a sure way to be saved if we are in Christ Jesus and we walk in the spirit and not after the flesh amen and so get it out of your mind that you're forgiven for your sins because your sins were so small enough and they fit in the category to be forgiven. No, you weren't forgiven because your sin fit in the category to be able to receive forgiven. You were forgive, forgiven because of the grace and mercy of God, because God chose to say that there is no condemnation to those who are going to truly commit and submit their lives to him and receive him as their personal Lord and Savior. And so none of us are forgiven for sins because our sin is small enough or big enough to to fit into the forgiveness slot, but we are forgiven for our sins because we have a good God. Amen. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, okay? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And so every sin, the wage of that is death, okay? A sin equals death. 
sin equals death. And so it is by the fact that Jesus Christ decided to choose to give us forgiveness. And should we accept that by accepting him as our personal Lord and Savior? Emphasis on Lord and Savior because you have to allow Jesus Christ to be your Lord, okay? I need to let it be known. He, is, he died to be the Savior of everyone on this world, but he wants to be your Lord, which means you begin to live for him, you submit your life to him, and you walk in his ways. And that's what Romans 8 and 1 is talking about when you are in Christ Jesus and you walk after the spirit but not after the flesh that's when Jesus Christ is your Lord okay and that's when you are serious about God there's no condemnation when Jesus Christ is your Lord okay you are now making him the head of your life amen and so as I stated previously if you are living a lifestyle of sin and going in cycles of sin then you need to repent you need to ask for forgiveness and you need to decide once and for all that you're going to walk in the ways of God and not in the ways of the world and not after your flesh, okay? Because it is God who desires to bring you to the place that he predestined you to be at, amen? And it is only by God's hand that you can walk in holiness. And the ways of this world, the ways of your flesh will lead to death, but it is only Jesus Christ that can bring you life. And if you are walking in the ways of the flesh, you are not experiencing life and life abundantly and so I encourage you today to take the step to truly asking the Lord for forgiveness of your sins submitting to him in all your ways trusting him in all your ways and truly allowing him to be your Lord and Savior not just Savior and for those of you who the enemy is trying to torment with guilt and shame and all of those things when you actually have been forgiven by God and you are walking in the ways of God and you're walking after the spirit and not after the flesh then I want to encourage you to continue to speak the Word of God over your life continue to speak Romans 8 verse 1 over your life continue to bask in the things of God and continue to walk in holiness and press towards the mark of the high calling okay which jesus christ called you for and know that there is no condemnation if you are walking in the ways of god okay allow god to perfect your testimony because your testimony is going to bring other people free and bring them closer to jesus christ amen and the enemy just wants to stop your testimony so he wants you to have guilt he wants you to be ashamed because he doesn't want you to speak of what god did for you because when you speak of what god did for you it refutes the enemy and it refutes every single plan and trap of the enemy that he was trying to set for those people who he knows your testimony is going to free don't let him do it walk in christ jesus walk in your freedom and know you are free in christ jesus whom the sun sets free is free indeed let's pray father god i just thank you lord for the lives of each and every one of your children lord we come against the spirit of condemnation right now in the name of jesus for your word says there is no condemnation now for those who are in christ jesus so every one of your people who are in you who are walking after your ways who are experiencing condemnation and all the lies of the enemy let it be refuted in the name of jesus and let your word spring forth within each and every one of them and let them heed your word and not the word and report of the enemy whose report will they believe for from here on out, Lord God, let them believe the report of the Lord. Let them believe your report. And for those who have been struggling and they've decided today to make the decision to make you their Lord and Savior, not just Savior, but their Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that they have committed their lives to you and that they have become true kingdom citizens, Lord God. And I pray that you begin to baptize them with the Holy Ghost, fill them with your Holy Ghost and your keeping power, that they may be able to walk this life in you, Christ Jesus, and after the Spirit and not after the flesh, for you have great and mighty things for each and every one of your children. And I'm so blessed to be able to see them. It's to come to pass and to be able to hear of the testimonies that will come from each and every person. I'm so grateful for your lives and I thank you Lord God that you have put a seal on your people and that you love your people and that you are here for your people and you are speaking to each and every one of them. I seal this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is so. I thank you guys so much for tuning in and I truly love you all. You guys are such a blessing and God has great, amazing plans for you. You just got to know it and you just got to believe it. Continue to fight the good fight of faith.
to you to press towards the mark of the high calling. God is rooting for you. You may not have friends and family who are on one accord with you living for Jesus Christ, but you know what? It's okay. God is rooting for you, and he's on one accord with the fact that you have made a decision to live for Jesus Christ, and I am on one accord with the fact that you've made a decision to live for Jesus Christ. And so God is faithful, and he will continue to be faithful to you. And so I pray this has blessed you. If it has, please like, please subscribe, please share it on social media, share it all over the whole world, and you have a blessed and prosperous rest of your day today. In Jesus' name, I love you guys.